Hey everybody, welcome back to Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel. This is another comic book edition. Uh, for this episode, we actually are going to talk about submitting books for grading. I actually just sent in two books that were already signed, that I got signed by the creators way back when, to get verified. And that's actually the reason I like to use CBCS. Who's, that's who we're going to talk about today. So CBCS is the only comic book company right now that does authentication of signatures that you acquired without a witness. So someone like myself, who always got comics paper, I collected them forever, but I always got them signed out of this, the love of the hobby, to meet the creators, to talk with them, and just to discuss the books that were so influential in my life. So to capture those moments, I always got their autographs on the books, inside the books, or whatever. So a lot of my books weren't able to be graded by companies like CGC because they were signed outside of their witnessing program. So if I were to submit those to CGC, they would come back with a green label or a qualified label. They would just simply state there's writing on the label. They wouldn't verify the signature or confirm that the signature is authentic. Well, over at CBCS, they teamed up with Beckett. And Beckett has a bunch of signature experts, so they actually verify those signatures are real. So someone like in my case, I, I know my signatures are real. I, I got them. But, you know, sometimes across the wild, you come up with books that you didn't know were real. So, like, for example, well, let's get to that in a second. Let's talk about the books I submitted of my own collection. Um, I submitted two books to get graded because they had a great promotion going on right now where they're giving $10 off of a verified signature per signature. So I had a copy of Chew number one, and everybody knows Chew was actually one of my favorite comic books ever made. In fact, John Lehman, the writer and creator, he's actually been a guest on this podcast, well, vlog before. <laughs> I interviewed him at Tucson Comic Con last year. And the other book I sent in was uh, Hellboy Seed of Destruction number one, one of the older books in my collection that I got way back when. I actually got uh, Mike Mignola to sign a copy of it in San Diego Comic Con, I believe, back in 2009. So we're talking about nearly 15 years ago. So those books have been sitting in my collection for the longest time, and I never got them encapsulated because I could never get those signatures verified, even though I knew they were real. So with this program they have now and the discount they had coming, I decided to send them in. So Chew Number 1 is signed by Rob Guillory and John Lehman, and Hellboy Seed of Destruction Number 1 is signed by Mike Mignola. But that's not where our journey stops. So some friends of mine and friends of the show who own the uh, Presidio Comics in Tucson Mall, they were actually heading up to the amazing Comic-Con up in Las Vegas this last weekend. And if you're watching this, it's already passed, so I'm sorry if I got your hopes up about some signings going on. But Kevin Eastman is going to be there, the creator of the Ninja Turtles. And if you didn't know, I absolutely love the Ninja Turtles. It's always going to be the biggest part of my heart when it comes to comic book and pop culture collecting. And I'm lucky enough to actually own Ninja Turtles number one. Not a first printing, it is a third printing, we've talked about it before on the show. And I also own a Raphael number one, which was the first appearance of Casey Jones. What's really special about this book, and I alluded to it earlier, when I bought this book, they said, oh, it's already been signed by someone on the inside. I just assumed it was Kevin Eastman. At this point, I think, here it's kind of like Spawn and Todd McFarlane. I feel like every copy signed at this point. But no, it was actually signed by Peter Laird and dated 1991. And as a huge comic book collector, and specifically Ninja Turtle collector, I'm pretty familiar with Peter Laird's signature, and it was spot on and perfect. And the person didn't try to sell me or upsell it. Like, oh no, it's just signed. It was actually at a collectible and hobby shop. And yeah, they had a Peter Laird Raphael number one signed book. So I jumped on it. And I have zero fears that this signature is not authentic. So they were at the show this weekend. I wanted to go, but I couldn't make it. So they ended up taking my books with me to get signed for me. In fact, I, Kevin Eastman apparently got really excited when he saw that Raphael number one. In fact, that it was signed on the inside. He's like, old school, I was told. So those are getting authenticated too. So hopefully here pretty soon, we're going to get some books back that were verified and witnessed. So we're going to kind of see the differences and the processes thereof. So let's talk a little bit about getting your books graded. All right, so we find ourselves on the homepage of CBCS Comics, and that's cbcscomics.com. And let's look at a couple things here before we actually start doing our submission. I think most importantly is check out their services. They do comic book grading, which uh, you can get a raw grade, which means they don't encapsulate the book. Uh, you can just get basic grades, greater notes, and there's certain comics that they run certain specials on, so that's under their featured comics. But we're going to skip most of this for now, and I'm going to show you the pricing and turnaround times. I actually think that's one of the most important things to look at. And one of the reasons I lean towards them is there's always a good turnaround time. Now, truth be told, the first book I ever sent in with them was my Fantastic Four number 32. I got signed by Stan Lee back in 2007, and that took nearly a year. That's because they were a startup company. I got it pressed. It just was, I actually almost forgot about the book at one point. But right now, we're going to start off here, the pricing and services. Right now, for 2000, books from 2001 to present, 
you're looking at a 30 day turnaround time for $22. That's pretty outstanding. 20 days for $32. Or if it's a book that's valued at more than $4,000, you're looking at 45. And as you can see, the tier gets a little bit more expensive for the value of the book and how quickly you want to turn it around. Now let's say you're turning around like a Amazing Spider-Man number one, and that's a book valued well over $7,000. Well, $80 or 10 day turnaround time, if it's a book you're planning on selling, that's nothing to pay. Now me, I keep almost all my books, so I'll pay the 22 and wait a little bit. And we'll scroll down here too. We're looking at some modern books. That's from 1975 until 2000. So like, for example, I sent in my Incredible Hulk number 180 a number of years ago, and that would have cost me $24 and a 30 day turnaround time. And again, these times have all gotten way better. At one point you were looking at six months, especially at the height of COVID, because people had nothing better to do, so they were sending in their books to be graded. Now, vintage is anything pre-1975. So those start off at $40. So you're talking about your classic Silver Age books. Like, I'm a big fan of the uh, 1968 Marvel big premieres. I have all of them. Now, let's say I were to send in some of those, I'm looking at 40 bucks a piece, right? And we're talking about nine total books. Well, nine books that I consider part of that run. And you have the options to send in stuff raw. What that means is you're not looking to get it encapsulated. You're just looking to get it graded, okay? And down here, we're looking at some other stuff. So if it was a witness signature, like for example, the ones I was talking about earlier with Kevin Eastman, uh, that particular book, you're probably looking at $18 just for the signature part on top of the encapsulation fee. Uh, original art, you can get done as well. Slab only, so you don't care about the grade, you just want to protect it. You can pay just to have it thrown in encapsulation, but it won't have a grade. And unfortunately, if you are looking to sell them, grades are very important. And comic book reholder, which I need to do with some of my older books because they're in their old CBCS slabs. And let's be honest, they weren't the greatest slabs originally. They've actually improved them exponentially. Okay, but let's move on. So now we're going to choose submit comics. Okay, so as you see, we kind of this is the basic synopsis of what we just went over in a little bit more detail. But we're going to choose start your submission. So I got nothing in there right now, so zero. I'm gonna hit add comic. So let's think about a comic here. Let's go with the one I just did recently, and that is Chew. So it gives you a list of all the different Chew books that are out there, including Chewbacca, but we're not doing that today. We're choosing Chew, and that's gonna be issue number one. And as you can see here indicated by those red stars, that's what you have to fill out in order to get the book graded properly. So in this case, this book for me came out in 2009. And if you don't know what year your book came out, there's great websites like Go Collect or even just some of the comic book pricing guides that'll tell you all the details in the book, including the publisher, the writer, the artist, whatever you need, the year, just check them out. And I always kind of keep them open to the side, but this one I do know off the top of my head. And what publisher does that? Image Comics. Oop, help if I spelled image right. There we go. And there's no variant to this particular one for me. And there's no pedigree. It didn't come up from a specific collection like Mile High or whatever. I have one of them. And here's where you have to kind of look and do your homework. You want to insure your books in case something happens because you are mailing them into Texas where they do the grading. So in my particular case, I'm going to say the book I have is probably worth about $400 in its raw condition. And here's where you can set it if you want a specific grade. Let's say I want it to be a 9.2. They will not encapsulate it or grade it unless it's a 9.2 or higher. But I always kind of just say none because I don't care. I just want the book encapsulated and graded for my own protection. So as you see here right now, our current total is $22. And it's saying process within six weeks after receipt. So right now they are looking at more than, well, still about a 30 day turnaround time, but six weeks is what they're estimating. And you can pick additional services, like you can have a picture on file, which adds another $5 to it, or a raw grade. So, hey, we don't want to get it encapsulated, just grade it raw, but nope, we want the encapsulation and the grade. I don't get the pictures taken because the number should be enough to me. So the next thing we're gonna pick, in my case, there's authentic and verified. So if you look, add a witness signature to your book or a verified. In our case, we're choosing a verified. And here, I'll type the name of John, who was the first person that signed that book. And here's something I never bothered to ask, but I hope is true. Let's say I misspelled their name. I don't know their name. And they're able to verify, like, well, that's not the name of the person that wrote the book. I hope they don't not encapsulate the book or grade it if I misspelled something here. So there's John, so if you see, that add $30, because that's the first signature. Now we're gonna add a second one. In this case, it's the artist on the book, and that is going to be Rob. 
Guillory. Okay, we're gonna hit add. And now we're up to $77. And it's saying up to 10 weeks now because it's gonna be two verified signatures, so that's more than just encapsulating and grading at this point. They have to go through the Beckett authentication services to make sure that it is correct. And then we would hit save. So nothing happens here until you actually pay for it. And like I said, there's certain coupons right now that are good to May 3rd. So if you're watching this after May 3rd, sorry, those discounts aren't there anymore. But let's say I wanted to add a witness signature. So we'll go with my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one from 19, in this case, 85. Even though they came out in 84, this is a third printing we're sending in, which is 1985. And that's from Mirage Studios. And what variant? I don't know if I'm supposed to put it here, but I'm going to. I'm going to say third print. Okay, and insured value, I'm going to say this one is $1,000. Okay, so I'm going to say add authentic name, Kevin Eastman. Oop, Kevin Eastman, there we go. And in my particular case, he signed this book on April 29th. And I'm going to hit add. So now we're looking at $32. But here's where I get a little confused. At what point and what do they need to verify that it is a witness authentic signature? So in my particular case, the CBCS representatives witnessed it and collected the book at the time. Now, if I was to send this in later on, I don't know what I would need to do in order to prove that it was really signed. But we're not gonna worry about that now because I know it's signed and that's all that matters. And here's where you hit checkout. And it asks if you wanna add any other services on. In my case, I'm gonna say no. Do I want to do pressing, no pressing, show me more information? I'm going to say no. And that's where we're going to hold off for now because if I kept doing that, you're going to see all my personal info. Eh, not that I don't like you. I just don't trust anybody. <laughs> so the next part is you would set up the shipping and everything else. So bear in mind you're paying for shipping twice. You're paying shipping out to Texas to be graded and you're prepaying for the shipping for them to return it. So in my case, after I did all this, I dropped it off at FedEx. And it's up to you to pack it and pack it well. Just know if you send it in any kind of bags and boards or anything like that, you're not gonna get those bags and boards back. Because a lot of people like to send them in Mylar or some of the thicker like um, Ultra Pro cases. And they're not gonna send those back. Their job is to grade them and encapsulate them and return them to you. So make sure you pack them well, because just because you sent it in a 9.8, it might not arrive in a 9.8. So keep that into consideration. Things get messed around, things get knocked around when they're being shipped. So the next part is you're just waiting for it to return. Now, this is the anticipation part. As a collector, I'm not a fan of this because you don't know if it's a 9.8, you don't know if it's a 6.2. Like, a lot of us have been doing this long enough where we can really gauge the overall quality and grade of the book. But at the end of the day, we're not the professionals. That's why we pay for this service. So, but that's it. That's how you really submit a book. Uh, next time you're at a convention or something along those lines, my recommendation is if you're looking to make sure you get the utmost value for your book, Go talk to CGC, CBCS, or whoever at this point and see what their witness signature program is like and go for that witness signature in the grading process. It's up to you who you go with. Me personally, I'm still going to get my book signed raw because I like to have my conversation with the writers, the artists, and get to know them as the human beings they are. And those books to me represent a memory of that moment. Am I never going to sell any of my books? No, I've definitely have sold some of my books before, but it's usually to like grade up, for example. Like right now, Kevin Eastman, that book he just signed for me, it's off being graded. I already have a fourth printing that's graded and signed by him. Now, will I part with that book? Maybe at this point, because I've upgraded essentially. But I'm a pack rat when it comes to my comics. So I'll never get rid of them unless I have to. But hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This has just been a little bit look at how to do a submission with CBCS. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, please tell me down below. If not, hey, you're the one that watched to the end. Don't blame me. <laughs> So guys, thanks for taking another ride with us. Tune in again for another Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel. But this has been a comic book edition, and I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye, everybody.